But when we talk about traveling, that's that's when we're going to start our new rubrica. Uh, rubrica, as we said before, it's a small section dedicated to a specific topic, and we will be handling uh, traveling. You know, we'll discuss pros and cons, tips here and there to make sure that um, uh, indeed your next trip to Italy is the most memorable one. So, Catherine, I think uh, the starting point would be uh, first to consider why you want to go to Italy and identify what type of traveler you are to see indeed what type of trip might be most appropriate and within your uh, comfort zone. Um, what I can think of first time travelers versus experienced or returning travelers. Or a, a solo traveler, or perhaps you're traveling with your friends or your family members or a significant other. Certainly the logistics will vary greatly from, uh, from you know, depending on how many people are traveling. And uh, or uh, you might uh, reconnect in with uh, your distant relatives or maybe not so distant relatives. <laughs> even. Uh, and also an another uh, thing to consider is um, interest based uh, uh, travel. Um, a lot of people have an interest, say, in, in hiking or biking or cooking or wine, and they may want to visit Italy to explore those possibilities. Or like myself, a native Italian returning home versus maybe a foreign going to Italy, because as you always tease me, <laughs> I usually do my arrangements last minute, whereas the Americans or yourself make arrangements way before. <laughs> yes, molto in anticipo. We do things way far ahead well, of time. Um, you know, it, it, there were specific uh, family situations, right? Circumstances that led me to buy my ticket almost the last minute. Well, you know, there's uh, actually an another reason you might want to go to Italy. You might want to go to Italy to um, improve your Italian skills, to attend a, a language school. There are many, many, many Italian language schools throughout Italy that offer non-Italian speakers the opportunity to immerse yourself in the language and, and the culture of Italy. And you can go for as little as one week or even up to several months. Yes, and uh, also during this rubrica, over time, we can discuss opportunities on how to interact and practice your Italian while, while in Italy because we know in the bigger cities uh, people will tend to communicate with you mainly in English or for instance if you are married you're not in Italian I mean you have learned some Italian um, and you're traveling with your native Italian speaker how do you protect so to speak your ability to practice your Italian without being overshadowed by your native Italian spouse uh, yeah that and happens to my husband a lot exactly. <laughs> yeah Yes, they always uh, they always ask me, oh, why doesn't he does he speak Italian? No, uh -huh. no, he speaks English. Yeah, another reason you might want to travel to Italy is to buy property in Italy. Uh, maybe you have a dream to retire um, along the Amalfi Coast or wherever, or or maybe you want to spend six months a year in Italy and six months in the United States. Oh yes, we can then def definitely discuss that. So. Caterina, what type of traveler are you? How many times have you been to Italy? And did you see your experiences changing for the best, obviously, as you return to Italy more frequently and built more confidence? Well, I've been to Italy about a dozen times. The first time um, I went to Italy was with my family when I was a teenager. We went to Sicily to visit my relatives. My mother had immigrated to the States um, back in 1949, and she hadn't seen her her, uh, her sisters and, and her, her nieces and nephews for many years. So we went back in 1969. I'm dating myself. <laughs> but anyways, um, that was the first time. Uh, since then, I have done the whole thing the whole spe spectrum. <laughs> I have done an organized big bus tour many, many, many years ago. I've been on small group tours. I've done specialized culinary food and wine tours. I've done independent travel. I even spent an entire month at a language school. So now I consider myself really more of a traveler than a tourist. Um, I've seen uh, the major tour sites in the major cities. I've ticked them off, you know, so mm -hmm. I really don't need to see the Coliseum for the 15th time. Um, and also, I like to 
go and I have, since I'm re retired now, I have the luxury to spend four to five weeks when I go to Italy. And I like to limit my trips to a few regions to concentrate to, on, to that, concentrate on, on a certain mm -hmm. area tr and to try to get off the beaten path mm -hmm. and also to explore my interests, which happen to be culinary traditions. I, mm -hmm. I want to, you know, not rush from place to place. I really want to enjoy where right. I am. Ex relax uh, experience. And then right. also you're very daring because you know how to drive and you do regularly drive in Italy as well. So <laughs> that's wonderful. So let's discuss a few tips when scheduling your trip to Italy based on why you're going to Italy, when are you going to Italy, where are you going and for how long. So <clears throat> we said before both uh, you and I have been going to Italy for several weeks at a time recently and although our approach differed greatly, we in our own way did some preparation that can be shared with our listeners that ensure the peace of mind once we got on that plane. So are we ready to start? Oh yeah, definitely. Okay, type definitely. number one, first time traveler, maybe a shy traveler, a solo traveler, a, um, a woman traveling by herself, doesn't like to plan the itinerary. Kathy, what do you think? What would you suggest? Well, it really depends on your personality. Uh, you may feel more comfortable on a group tour. Um, certainly, there are many, many, many group tours available. You can do anything from a big bus tour, uh, companies like you know Perillo and Gate One and Trafalgar. You, you know, everybody's heard of those, um, or uh, a small group tour that maybe only has maybe ten or twelve people, up to twenty-four people. And again, there are a multitude of of, of these types of tours available. And you can do your research on the internet. You know, uh, companies like you know Rick Steves, Odyssey, then, then, then even small companies. Um, another possibility is: Do you have a special interest? You might want to look into a special interest tour. Maybe you're an avid cycler. There are small group tours that specialize in cycling from one place to another. Mm -hmm. Or perhaps you're an older um, person. Um, you might want to look into something like Road Scholar, mm -hmm. who specializes in group tours for older people. Yeah, I heard great things about it. Yeah. yeah. Another, another possibility is um, you can look for specific tour groups that are for only solo travelers. Mm -hmm. And there's even one for only, actually there's several, for solo female travelers. There's actually a, a website called womentravelingtogether.com mm -hmm. um, for women traveling alone. And uh, and also a cruise, it tends to be a good um, option because first of all, you have a variety of dif the, the different ports and again, that experience of also the life at sea. And uh, again, if you're a shy traveler, you're traveling by yourself for the first time, let them take care of you. Uh, for for a little bit so that uh, you don't have to frantically run from one place to um, another. And obviously to make these arrangements and uh, work with a professional, someone that knows Italy, not someone that can just book your hotel in Italy. Um, you want that customized experience. So obviously in, in any scenario, um, there might be some pros and cons. Let's talk, <clears throat> excuse me, let's talk about the pros and cons of group tours. Um, so. Well, I've, I've done several types of group tours. So I'm <laughs> I think pretty you're a, familiar. A frequent traveler stamp. I, I, uh, almost, not quite. <laughs> okay, uh, certainly with a group tour, one of the pros is that everything is pretty pretty much prearranged. You just show up. You don't have to worry about finding hotels. You don't have to worry about getting from point A to point B. You don't have to worry pretty much about restaurant uh, uh, reservations because mm -hmm. many times these tours will have group dinners. You don't have to worry about getting tickets ahead of time to go to the Colosseum or to the Vatican Museums. So you don't have to worry about that. Also, you do have sort of a general idea of how much the trip is going to cost. You can budget beforehand. You can, you budget. can prepare for that trip. Yeah, there are certain things not included, mm -hmm. like um, tips. Depending mm -hmm. on the tour that you're on, some include yeah. tips, many do not. And then meals and drinks not included in the tours and, and, and any okay. souvenirs, personal expenses. Okay. Well, the other, as I said, we're talking about the solo traveler, the um, the one with less experience. Uh, these options uh, might also put you in contact with uh, um, travel companions that uh, with whom you can form long-term friendships. Um, maybe you don't have to be so fluent in Italian or any Italian at all. And uh, pretty much you have professional guides and tour managers to help uh, solve all your problems, if, uh, if anything. And again, it's nice to be in a group. Now, there are some cons as well. 
<laughs> tell yes. us, tell us yes. about uh, uh, what. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely, there are some things you have to adapt to when you are in a group. One thing is pretty much on every group tour, you have a strict schedule. Typical schedule, breakfast from seven to eight in the hotel dining room. On the bus at eight, you get on the bus, you reach uh, point A at 8.30, you have a lunch break at a certain time. So there's little, if any, flexibility, cer certainly on the days that are, are already scheduled. You can't say, hey, you know, I don't wanna, mm -hmm. I don't wanna go see this museum, or eh, you know, I, I wanna that's, stay that's longer. Good. You can't do that. Okay. Another thing is you may not like your travel companions. So on one hand, you might if you're lucky or you may not. <laughs> there is always at least one person in every group who is a royal pain in the behind, who is always late, who is always complaining about everything. And that may grate on your nerves, let me tell you. And how about all those group meals? On one hand, again, no headache about making reservations, but uh, do you have any comments on those group meals? Well, usually when you're on a tour, you eat your group meal either in the hotel dining room or in a restaurant that can accommodate a large number. So you're not going to have that intimate kind of trattoria, local mm -hmm. kind of feel. And you usually have a set menu. You may have the opportunity to, cho to choose between one or two entrees, but generally it's a set it's menu. A set menu. So, so you really, you don't have that opportunity to, to pick. To, it's like, what is pick. that? I would like yeah. to try what is called. Okay. And if you're vegetarian, that might be a problem. If you're vegan, it may be a problem. Because so, I haven't, uh, you know, yeah. um, I you mean, obviously listen. Italy can accommodate those right. uh, um, eating uh, restrictions, but uh, they might not have uh, made the arrangements beforehand for you. Uh, I see a lot of people with uh, headphones, with, uh, you know, I, I was on the plane and I'm, you know, I didn't bring my headphones, so I had to resort to the, to the airline. And I came out, I really wanted to see this movie. My ears were hurting. Um, how about those headphones? Are they very when, good? Whenever, whenever, you, whenever you are in a large group tour, they have these little individual little headsets. Mm -hmm. And they have different names. They're called whispers or different other names. Mm -hmm. And the quality is quite variable. And it's uncomfortable. And... It makes you look like you're part of the group, mm -hmm. and you you feel like you're part of a herd, and, and it just makes you stand yeah, out as a tourist. Out. You are yeah. a tourist. <laughs> okay, so I mean, so in these also, you might not have as much time to go and explore by yourself unless there is that designated free uh, afternoon, and uh, um, so. And then if the tour guides do take you to shops, it's probably shops that they have some sort of convention. So it's always the same. Okay. And commissions. Sometimes they get commissions okay. too. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now let's talk about, uh, let me see, maybe a solo traveler, but someone is willing to make their own arrangements. Do you have a little, you know, how did you start? Um, well, um, it, it sort of depends on, on you know, what your, your purpose is. One of the things you might want to do is uh, connect with your local Italian uh, cultural center for re referrals for different things. But also, there's lots of great resources online that you might want to use. Um, you can include websites of uh, American expats living in Italy. One that I really recommend if you're visiting Rome is romewise.com. Mm -hmm. yep. She, uh, she She's an American who's been living in Rome for many years, years and she has many, many, many uh, uh, bits of information online to talk about, uh, you know, accommodations, places to eat, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, definitely. There is a plethora of websites and people that are familiar within the industry that have created wonderful blogs. Okay, traveling solo versus traveling with family. Again, if you want to avoid any major headache trying to please everyone, uh, maybe you can get expert uh, advice on have someone to plan your trip, transportation, and hotel. And also, depending on the size of the group, and this is something that people might not consider right away, if the parties in your group are agreeable to drive sick shift. So make sure that, you know, you clarify that. Um, it is actually better to book two different vehicles, depending on the size of, uh, of your family, instead of trying to find a van that would accommodate, you know, 10 people, even because those vans, if you're going to teeny tiny towns, 
are going to get stuck. Okay. Um, and also make um, set some ground rules with your family members that you're not an expert, you know, so um, that you're trying your best to organize a trip that everyone is going to um, enjoy. So trying to find out what everyone does so that you can schedule some free time accordingly kind of you're going to become their personal um, guide. Uh, the next one I think is uh, um, also f appropriate to them or re uh, relevant to you, reconnecting with distant relatives or not so distant. Uh, you did that, right? Uh, yes, it, it helps if you've had prior contact with the relatives. For me, it was easy because I'm just, you know, first generation. So I knew I had cousins and aunts and uncles. Um, so if you know who your relatives are, uh, you can contact them by WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, or email. And I always let my relatives know when I'm coming and then we make a, spend arrangements some time. to meet. Yeah, spend time yes, together. Yes, and obviously you probably have done some online research to see actually right. who you're related to <laughs> in order to get phone numbers and wherever. And a useful, a useful thing is once you get to the town, some people might want to go to the cemetery to visit or the municipio, the town hall, where a lot of records are kept, including the local church, because if you're applying for dual citizenship, uh, that's where you're going to find the records that you're going to need to apply for uh, um, dual citizenship. Yes, yeah, certainly you can go online on different uh, research yeah. sites. And, and also uh, one little bit of advice, a little caveat, if you are going to the municipio, it helps if you speak a, a little, little Italian. Italian. Yep. I can tell you from personal have, experience. Well, I have to say, no matter what, a little bit of Italian helps you greatly. I mean, in our Italian for tourists um, classes, we provide the language necessary to handle most of the travel situations, as well as a ton of cultural tips and, um, you know, how to do things and so forth. Now, whenever you're going to visit relatives, they might know you, you yet you haven't met them. Uh, but don't be surprised if they're going to um, expect, ask you and kind of expect for you to stay with them. Uh, there is that sense of hospitality that you're, you're really families, like why would you want to go to an hotel? So there you have to uh, be a little uh, tactful. If you really feel that your language skills are not up to par to stay with these relatives for like 14 hours a day, um, you know, you might, but you're going there, you're flying 5,000 miles to be with there, to be told the stories that you don't remember, you never heard of. Remember, there are so many travel apps that with basic communication have enabled travelers, first time travelers and not fluent speakers of Italian to have some sort of <laughs> real conversations. And between language apps in your hands, you can do it. <laughs> Everybody can do it. So uh, Viviana, when you visit your relatives, what would you bring as a gift? Okay, so if it is someone that you haven't met, uh, or maybe you have met every, you're going to visit every so often, uh, it depends a little bit of the age of the family members. So the younger generations will be happy with clothing. So whether it's a uh, the local sports team jersey or a sweatshirt from a proper US brand. Um, if you have kind of parents or grandparents, people that like to display things in their house, uh, trying to find something that one is not breakable um, and two that might represent your city. Uh, for instance, um, souvenir plates. Um, is it Wendell August Ford? Wendell okay. August Ford, that yes. That does a wonderful job. Um, Sari's candy. I mean, it's something, you know, the pretzels and the chocolate, very unique. You know, you want to provide an experience that otherwise my family has the shopping list. You know, my nephew will have certain things. My si and uh, I remember my brother loves the cherry Coke, cinnamon rolls, and the Pillsbury, wherever, frozen bread, just because he likes when it pops. <laughs> Okay, we do all the wonderful breads that I have in Italy. That was more for the popping effect. And red hot sauce as chicken wings have become a popular finger food in our house. Um, at some point in the show, not today, we will cover the opposite, what to bring back from um, Italy. So uh, let's, um, let's just um, uh, cover a little bit another topic. Um, what about property? Uh, if you were going to buy property in Italy, where would you buy? Uh, where would you buy? I'm still traveling throughout Italy to define that. And actually these long extended period of times are indeed to figure out, would I love to visit that place or would you, uh, would I love to live there? Um, so my two main pieces of advice is that again, if you're investing money, big or small that it might be, trying to work with a local professional, don't just go buy 
Facebook pictures uh, on a post uh, because the process is lengthy and complex and you want to limit the aggravations of getting into a purchasing agreement too hastily without having checked at the catasto, the, the, where they keep all the deeds, if the property, as you see, is registered correctly. Was that swimming pool already there or did the owners build it and kind of might have spared themselves the work of updating the property records? Is the house structurally solid? Have a professional evaluate that for you versus you say, hey, I don't see anything falling. Everything must be good. Uh, also, you might have your mindset on a location, whether because you romanticize about it or because you might not be aware of a comparable town in other parts of Italy that offer the same amenities, maybe even at a lower price tag. So a professional that has access to properties all over the country should do a, an initial work with you to depict your Italian life in Italy with all the components you're looking for, not just the property and also the town, movie theater. Do you want a slow city? Do you want a bigger town? Uh, sea versus uh, mountains. Yeah, it's a very romantic thing to think about. Yeah, do. I wouldn't but think it, about the there, amount there's a lot right away. Yeah, you, know? you, you, have, you have to really think about the practicalities. And kind of to wrap it up, once you have identified possible areas, take a couple of trips off season. Uh, all towns in Italy are embellished by the light of the summer sun and the general tourist season amenities. So what does that mean? town look like in the winter? Who lives there? Are you looking for other expats or do you prefer a full immersion Italian experience? So also by going off season, you might meet uh, some of the locals who might turn out to be very helpful down the road in your acclimation uh, process. And we do have a previous episode uh, where we interviewed a uh, Nikki Taylor, an Australian property consultant based in Puglia. So one quick one minute, one minute, Kathy, just to say if you have an interest in regional, in Italian culinary and history and food traditions, what do you do? I, I take a food tour. <laughs> you take a food tour. I take lots of food tours, yes, in, in, in individual cities, and I've done week-long food tours. So I can say that uh, that's a great way to, to learn about Italy and to travel. And we can talk about that later some other time. Okay. So, well, unfortunately, our hour is up. And il big bene, detto stop. It's time for us to say arrivederci e alla prossima. We want to thank you all for tuning in to the program. If you have any questions or comments, or if you have any travel topics you would like us to address, please contact us at the Italian Radio Hour at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. And remember, if you or any of your family and friends have missed a prior episode or would like to listen to this episode again, please visit our website at www.istitutomondoitaliano.org and click on the Italian Radio Hour tab. We would like to thank our guests, our sponsor, Istituto Mondo Italiano e la Prima Espresso e la Boara for the music. Next week, we'll learn more about the return of Alla Boara for their CD release concert at Istituto Mondo Italiano on October 22nd. And if you are not living in the Pittsburgh area or you might be out of town, remember you can catch us streaming live at khbradio.com every Thursday at 5 p.m. And be sure to like us on Instagram and Facebook at the Italian Radio Hour. Until next time, alla, alla pro prossima. Ciao, ciao. ciao. The Italian Radio Hour has been sponsored by Istituto Mondo Italiano.